Thank you. Beautiful, beautiful crowd in here tonight. Everlasting Life Restaurant, Capitol Heights, Maryland. Let me give you the address, 9185 Central Avenue. It's playing host to the Rolling Grimes, not just sports and entertainment show. For those of you who don't know, and many of you should already, I am your host, Rolling Bubba Grimes, and I am excited, delighted to bring two very distinguished guests on our show tonight. One is the proprietor of the Everlasting Life Restaurant, officially known as Dr. Baru. We will introduce him to you when we return, after we pay a couple of bills. And then we have the lovely Miss Kishana, who is the owner and the doer of uh, So Extra Fit Fitness. Folks, once again, I'm Roland Bubba Grimes. For those of you who are tuning in for the first time, we're being watched on roughly 107 countries across the world and 50 states here in the United States of America. Uh, we've taped well over 100 shows. You can find us on GrimesNation.com, as I mentioned, mentioned a little earlier. And we're going to get things started in a few seconds. Sit tight. Rolling Bubble Grimes, Rolling Grimes, not just was an entertainment show. We'll be back with you in a few moments with our guests. Rolling Bubba Grimes from the Rolling Grimes, not just sports and entertainment show, as I mentioned to you a little earlier. We have two dynamic guests on tap for you right now. To my left and your right, I'm going to introduce to some and present to others a young lady we officially known as Kishana, and she has a business known as So Extra Fit here in the Washington, D.C. area. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for so Extra Fit by Kishana. Thank you. Now, now you may know this from time to time, Kishana's going to laugh at me because occasionally she has sat in on our show as a co-host and she likes everything scripted. And I think that's real cool, but I don't do teleprompters and I don't do scripts because I want to catch her completely off guard and see how she handles this thing. Kishana, how are you? Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to you as well. Now, I understand that you've been a little busy the last couple of months being a professional. <laughs> Professional. What is it that you do? <laughs> oh, professional everything. You know. um, We're doing football season. What is it that you do? <laughs> uh, NFL cheerleader. You are an NFL cheerleader. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. We're standing here. An official NFL cheerleader. Now, before I get into Dr. Baruch, uh, you actually, about a year or so ago, you went on a special trip with the team that you're involved with. Tell us a little bit about that experience. <laughs> The calendar trip um, that he's Roland is referring to, we went to um, Jamaica actually and shot the calendar. Super. And then a few months before that, you went on another trip for for a for a tour. Day? Oh, for, oh, for a tour. For a tour. <laughs> <laughs> I I was selected, yes, to go to Djibouti to um, to perform for the troops there. Okay, super. Yes. And she did some other stuff. We can't talk about it right now. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> all right, to my right and your left, I'm going to present to some and introduce to others the owner, distinguished owner of Everlasting Life Restaurant that is doing some amazing things. I'm saying this with a lot of humility because over the last couple of years, I've watched this young man uh, build this brand, uh, have quite an impact on our community here in the Washington, D.C. area. And uh, he also is one of the persons that I can credit for helping me to drop 
that 30 pounds the last quarter of 2013. I'm looking forward to dropping about 300 more this year. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Mr. Dr. Baruch. <laughs> I always want to make sure I pronounce your name correctly. Dr. Baruch, I always want to call you Barack, and I know why, because, <laughs> but I got it right. right? Yeah, yeah, that happens a lot. <laughs> so you still answer to it? Yeah. Super. Especially when I'm interviewed live, I just, <laughs> just go with it. Just go with it. <laughs> My man, look, I'm going to ask you something that everybody on the planet Earth has probably asked you by now, but we're going to do it here on the Rolling Grimes show. What happened and you woke up one day in your wrong mind and said, I'm going to do a restaurant? Well, um, I used to be into IT. I'm going to try to break it down real short. Please do. Used to be in IT and I was setting up some computers at a big conference for a food industry conference. And uh, as I was setting up the computer, somebody was practicing their speech. And as they practiced their speech, they said, if you control a man's food, you control him. And the minute she said him, like a Stepford husband, I got up on the phone and I said, look, family, we're about to have to open up our own restaurant. Because someone else is obviously controlling our food and the person who's controlling wow. it is not looking out for our best interests, and you can wow. see that because everybody is, you know, getting sick. You know, we're saying like we're getting bigger. People are dying too young. Ramps are being put on houses, not for recreation, but because they can't get in the house unless the ramp is there. You know, because wow. people are having amputations or people are too sick to, to move on their own. So we started that, and uh, that was the beginning of Everlasting Life as a viable food source to communities that were disserved and underserved. You know, it, it's interesting because when you said that someone, you had this conversation with someone, and they said, you control a man's food, you control him. Right. Now, from a negative connotation, that means that you can have the kind of effects that you just mentioned a few minutes ago, a few seconds ago, but by the same token, you also can have some positive effects from your eating. Uh, what, what determines the difference between eating that which is going to be debilitating and that which is going to be enhancing to our growth and our sustainability. Right. We, we have to begin to recognize that we have been eating for taste. We've been eating for convenience. We've been eating for price. We've been eating for what we are accustomed to. And it's time now that we begin to eat for nutrition, for the benefit of the body. The cells of our body are made up and grow and expand and do the work that they need to do from the nutrition that we consume in our food. And we're not consuming a lot of nutrition, and that's why we're finding organ systems and, you know, overall our health in our community is deteriorating so rapidly. Now, the work that you do, Kishana, with your So Extra Fit, is nutrition a, an important component of it, or is it something now that you kind of let people make that decision or make the determination on their own, and they kind of incorporate, incorporate whatever, who they are, into their workout, or do you actually help them kind of put together a plan for their eating as well? So what we do at So Extra Fit, we have fitness programs that promote nutrition and we actually have a on-site nutritionist that we partner up with to help our clients with the nutritional um, process of planning their meals, going to the grocery store and actually knowing what to get at the grocery store that will help them um, reach their fitness goals. So it's 70% of what you your overall goal, your fitness, your health, your mind, your body, and your soul combined. Now, now, what when someone sits with you and they talk about their nutritional goals, well, actually, they talk about their overall fitness goals, correct? Yes. And then they talk about what aspect of their nutrition that they need to change. What are one or two of the more popular things that you're finding out that people need to shift, adjust, change? Dr. Baruch mentioned eating for taste. Tell me a little bit about what you're hearing and experiencing from people well, that you're working with. One of the common um, common things that comes up is, well, I eat healthy and I and I eat the right meals and I eat my fruits and my vegetables, but then you get to the point, well, how frequent are you eating? Well, see, now you just told them the conversation that I have with you. <laughs> you know, I eat very good. Anyway, <laughs> I eat very good. I just eat very good often and sometimes mm -hmm. late. But when I said that to you, what was your response? <laughs> well, I, my thing is, you have to make sure that you're fueling the body consistently. So, you know, if you're eating one meal a day, you think that's going to sustain you for the whole entire day, you're not doing your body justice. Really? You're not. Now, I'm from the school of thought sometimes that if you eat one meal in a day, 
that you can actually lose weight. <laughs> well, I think, um, first off, speaking about school, I think you should let everybody know that you and I knew each other Aww. back in the day. <laughs> And there's some references that we can point to with regard to what you ate and what I ate and how you used to talk about me at lunch. But anyway, um, I never took your lunch money. No, I never took my lunch money because I was bigger than you back then. <laughs> sure you were. <laughs> Brother, you would never bigger than me. You wouldn't, you wouldn't have had this restaurant. Right, right. You wouldn't have been able to fit in the kitchen. Go ahead. There we go. But what, what, we, what we're seeing now, again, is our concept of nutrition is off. It's totally off. So proper nutrition is not only eating balanced meals, but eating them frequently enough to, as Kishana shared with us, to properly fuel the body to accomplish what you need to accomplish. You playing football is different than me, you know, sitting around the house. So it would require more food, more nourishment in order to provide you with the fuel that you need in order to accomplish what you need to accomplish. Otherwise, you're going to run out of fuel and you're going to be sluggish. Right. But meanwhile, somebody who, who's sedentary doesn't need that. And what we're finding now, of course, is the sedentary lifestyle is taking over. And we're still eating as much as we would otherwise be eating. And, you know, you're seeing the results. We're getting bigger and uh, we're becoming more sluggish. And we're just compounding the problem because we're continuing to do the same thing over and over and over again. Now, you mentioned the sales earlier. What impact does the kind of food that you offer here at the restaurant, what kind of impact does that have on the sales? Well, we would like to think that the food, as in... The name itself, Everlasting Life, the food gives life. So we're talking about providing food that nourishes the cells of the body and gives the cells of the body life as compared to food that is literally toxic and damaging to the body, damaging to the function of organs, damaging to the function of the cells. All across the board, it's, it's just damaging to us. And we have to conclude at some point as we look in the church pews and we look at the lines at the grocery market, if we look in our community and we see, well, something's wrong. Something's wrong, and we're all doing it. You know, dialysis clinics being built in our community is not progress. You know, when they're building a new cancer wing on your hospital in your neighborhood, that's not progress. When, can't, when, when hospitals are bragging about record numbers as far as their income for this previous year, that's not progress. And we have to now conclude that there's something that we have to do. We have to take charge of our health, and that's what we offer here at Everlasting Life, the opportunity for you to take charge of your health and begin to correct errors that you've made, begin to reverse illnesses, and also begin to extend your life and improve upon the quality of your life. Now, as you, as you go forward, Kishana, when you came in to the restaurant tonight before we went on the set, you were drinking a trough of water. <laughs> I mean, just, just a whole bucket and a half. And I looked at it and I said, if I drank that, I wouldn't be able to eat for the rest of the night. And I look at you, and quite frankly, you're like the size of one of my arms. <laughs> now, what is it that you're doing when you drink all that water, number one? And number two, what else do you eat during the rest of your life? I, I eat at least about three to four meals a day. I snack um, frequently, have like little, um, my, my little favorite is carrots, guys. Like if you give me a bag of carrots, it's I'm on. It's on? Yes. Okay. Um, and I, water is really, really good. Hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. And I'm a, a big person on that. I need okay. to hydrate. And how active I am, I have to. Now, the activities that you're involved in, you do some modeling. I do. And professional cheerleader. Trainer. Trainer. Business group, owner. Business owner, group fitness instructor, uh, bikini um, competitor. Right, that's right. Competitor. Fitness, right. And you want to, you want you placed in a few. Yes, I uh, placed in uh, NPC national um, national competition. See, I told you. Well, no, everybody's <laughs> giving her hand. She placed in the national NPC. NPC. Yes. So actually, on my website, there's a picture of her in a bikini and me in a swimming trunk. <laughs> and the guess is, oh. can you figure out which one is which? <laughs> I actually turned sideways. Anyway, she said so. So I eat four meals a day. However, it doesn't seem to have the same impact on me that it's having on you. I'm working on it because I'm trying to preserve my sexy. I love that. Now, say you it are again. Not say it again. Preserve my sexy. Preserve the sexy. Now, Dr. Baruch, and, I, and you two have to help me out <laughs> with this now. How is it that the fitness and the nutrition not only improves our lives in terms of our health, but what about our performance athletically? What about how we feel in terms of... Uh, of uh, intimacy, what kind of effect does it have on our overall well-being? I know what I've read, I know what I heard on Dr. Oz, I don't watch Dr. Oz anyway, so tell me what's going on. Well, 
I would say, uh, as far as performance, you're looking at you're having to you're looking at yourself. For instance, you've lost thirty pounds. Who's looking at me now? You, there's there's a weight difference on your knees of thirty pounds. That's that's a lot that you're not carrying anymore. And just imagine, as you get more of that off, how much that stress and, and pain and suffering is going to be off of your knees, your lower back, and off of your your organ systems in your body because they're having to support the the weight and support all that you know moving the blood through all of that that you are okay, okay? so that that's one side of it. I'm not sure how to take that one but it sounded good <laughs> moving the blood through all of that that you are well, well, go ahead brother I'm with you know, you. I'm trying to keep it clean no you good because you're close <laughs> you're <with an> <laughs> I've been reaching this right, right. you talk about me on Thursday right. <laughs> so uh, again nutritionally you you have to make the adjustment and you're making you're eating four meals a day you should be losing if you're aggressive about wanting to lose weight, you should be losing one to two pounds a day if you're aggressive. Now, if you're eating the same things that you've been eating that have contributed to your problem, then you'll marginalize your, your progress, you know? So it's, when you're ready to make that move, then you'll see that tied in with the physical activity. You know, you're, you're gonna see yourself, you know, we'll, we'll be looking at your shrink, right? You That'll work. Look, why you watch me shrink before we take this quick break? <laughs> Kishana, now, we're talking about eating, eating the three, four, five, six, twelve meals a day. <laughs> now, how much exercise does a, I think there's an endomorph, ectomorph, and mesomorph is what I learned when I was in school with you. And I'm considered a, uh, uh, I was a mesomorph, now I'm an endomorph, sort of. <laughs> but how do you determine how much a person, if my goal is to drop, as we talked about, 470 pounds this year, how do you, how do you determine how much exercise, how many workouts do I need per day to well, help me get there? Well, everyone's body is different. Everyone's everyone body is different. Right. Um, heights, different weight, uh, different sizes. So what um, I suggest is definitely learn about you, meaning know your height, know your weight, know your your um, your body fat percentage. And this are things that you can, do, you can check out and get checked at the doctor's. Um, they can help you with that, as well as if you go to some of these gyms now with personal trainers, you don't necessarily have to sign up for a personal trainer to, in order for them to have take your BMI or your your uh, weight or to measure you. So to learn more about you first and to see, well, also how much, how many calories are you taking and taking a day, and what is your goal, and you can actually go to. Um, your doctor will also, if you have a personal trainer, to say, hey, how much do you think I would need to lose in order to reach my goal? Normally, it, it takes about uh, 3,500 calories to lose one pound. Um, so you have to determine how, how much of that do I have to, um, you know, calorie deficiency do I have to take off? You know, that, that's real interesting, you know, when you're talking about different body types. You know, my, my niece eventually, you know, recently just broke on, on up real bad because we were having a conversation and I was explaining to her that because of my body shape, body type, years of lifting weights, et cetera, that I went to that doctor that I could talk about to get an idea of where I should be in terms of my physical fitness, my weight, my BMI, all of that good stuff. And he said to me that my natural weight right now is 310 pounds. And when I looked at it, measured it up, I actually weigh, I actually wear about a size 46 jacket at 310. And my waistline is around a 40, 40 to 38 at 310. He asked me, he said, look, once you lose that girth that's around here, what's left? And I said, well, for the most part, if you look at me from behind, I'm 175. Because when I turn sideways into the front. But in all seriousness, when he said it, Dr. Simmons said that to me with a straight face. And I said, well, how could it be? And he said, look, and he broke it down to me. He said, you have so much muscle on top of that. He said, now, of course, as the days go on, you're going to bring that number down, bring that number down some more. He said, but Rowan, let's face it. He said, once you lose some of whatever that is that your son keeps drawing when he draws a picture of you, he draws a stomach, you know, that he draws my head. He said, once you lose that, what else is left? And when he asked me, I said, well, not much. He said, well, there you go. And I was shocked. And when I told my niece that, she got mad. She said, you need to fire your doctor. But in all honesty, when I stopped and looked at it, it was about 285, 295 when I was almost at my peak. And um, my body structure. 
Now, I know that doesn't sound, you looking at me like, I'm looking you know, at you like your niece was looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, so now, I know football players now who are 320, and they barely have an ounce of fat on them. Mm -hmm. Tell me what gives. Well, it's not healthy. You're so carrying 300. Itself? Right. That's right. not natural. Okay. You know, we used to have strength without all of the bulk. You know, now we have the bulk because when we hit somebody, the impact is greater. You know. Okay. However, um, no, I'm not, I'm not a fan of the, the bulk because, again, just as I said before, all of that that is you, that blood's got to pump through all of that still. Mm -hmm. And you, your heart is burdened with having to go through it, whether it's muscle or fat. Hey, you scared me, man. Come on now. <laughs> it's time to change. Let's mm -hmm. work it out. Well, I'm but I wanted to go back to something because Let's I think you, you made a reference to, if not, how does it affect your not only your energy but your performance? Mm -hmm. Because I think that's a big deal that we see now, you know. The, uh, the, the locker room talk right. is more people now are using Viagra than ever before on right. the planet. Right. And we have to look at, okay, is that natural? No, it's not natural. Right. And we have to determine, and also another question, is it natural for you to call your doctor up, doc? Is it okay for me to have sex? Right. That doesn't make right. sense. Right. You know, but that's where we are. Yeah, you got to get permission from I'm your doctor. Enough to have right. sex. Right. Is it okay then? Right. <laughs> no, no. That make, don't call Dr. Simpson or Simmons or whatever right. and ask him that. You, know, you need to become your best doctor. And you need to determine that obviously something I'm doing is clogging my blood vessels. And what we're doing is clogging our blood vessels is eating, you know, we're, we're a vegetarian, a vegan vegetarian restaurant. And I'm a big advocate of stopping the consumption of dead animal flesh. As long as, you, as long as you're consuming that and you're keeping up cholesterol levels across the planet, they've never been so high. You know, when we get back, we're going to start there and we're going to get into it with a little bit more intensity. I know you can bring it because I hang out with you. Folks, these two people, I am drafting them. They're like my first and second round, actually like both the first round draft picks, and I want them to be co-hosts on my show. So as we take a break, I want you all to give them a big round of applause, and hopefully that will encourage them to be, to be co-hosts on the health segment of Roller Grimes, not just sports and entertainment show. We'll be back in a few minutes. Let me know when you're ready. Mm -hmm, I'm ready. How's it feel, Raymond? I'm enjoying it. <laughs> like, this side feels lighter and light. This one is such a hard day, but it, it does feel lighter. And I love the way. And we had a regular mineral rich, mineral rich magnetic uh, mud mass. And everyone keeps telling me one cheek looks higher than the other right now. This one, this face does feel lifted. This one feels dropped. I need to lift this one up. Mm -hmm. We call that a natural lift with our products. I feel it. Yes, you got it. I feel it. One. Everlasting Life Restaurant here in Capitol Heights, Maryland, playing host to the Rolling Grimes, not just a sports and entertainment show. I'm your host, Rolling Bubba Grimes, your chocolate troglodyte. In here talking to my good friend, Dr. Baruch, and my even better friend, Miss Keyshana. So extra fit by Keyshana is the name of her brand. Dr. Baruch, before we took a break, you were telling me that animal flesh just isn't what's happening right now. Let's get into it a little bit more. Clogging arteries, some other stuff. Tell me what it is that you've learned about the consumption of animal products that just basically sent you over the edge. Well, we, we're not designed to consume animals. We don't have canine teeth, even though you think you do. And you can go out and all day long bite into the side of a cow out in the middle of a field like a lion would. You're not drawing back flesh. You're going to draw back some gum. And uh, you do not have a short digestive tract. You do your 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 jaw actually works off of kind of like a hanging or L-shaped hinge, right, right. as compared to a, a carnivorous animal's scissor. So it's quite different. They bite, rip, swallow. You bite, chew on it, chew on it, chew on it, and then swallow. And therefore, you are more so in the category of an herbivore. And when you eat in that space, you find that you normalize with regard to your weight. You normalize with regard to your health and well-being, and a whole lot of other positive things happen, but you said the other stuff, and I think the other stuff is really important too, because when we look at what is in meat that they are, are injecting in it to cause it to be bigger, well, it's getting into us, and it's causing us to be bigger. 
Not only that, it's getting into men and causing them to be a little softer. You remember back in the day, it wasn't as many yeah, right, soft right. people right. as there are today. Right. You know, right. we don't have as, we don't have anything with, you know with soft people. But I'm just saying, it's well, no, been a change. I mean, let's go down. I mean, there, there is a there is a noticeable that those of you who disagree speak on it, but there is a noticeable difference right. in the male species. Now, the Keyshawn, you too young to remember when back in the day when we were kings, but uh, nonetheless. Hey, I had a king. My daddy was a king. Okay, then you yes. do know that. Right. I stand corrected. Yes. I stand corrected. <laughs> so having said that, there is a temperamental change mm -hmm. in males. Right. There's yeah. a temperamental change. Go to recess at any high school, elementary school. They're not, they're not playing ball. They're not doing. They're not only not playing ball. If you look at them from behind, little boys look like little girls. Ooh, they're starting to Ooh. take on those right. features. Right. And this is not by mistake, but by design. I don't want to take the conversation off from where you're going. That'll be maybe well, this is where show. we're going. This is where we're going. Right well, let's go there. <laughs> it's uh, it's time that we recognize that something has happened to our food chain, our food supply, that is damaging the natural endocrine balance that should exist inside of us. Testosterone, estrogen, yeah, among them all day long. Yeah, and we're seeing issues with women and endo endometriosis and fibroid tumors. Yes. We're seeing it. Um, what is it, hysterectomies are at an all-time high, and it's because of our overconsumption of estrogens. And those chemicals are injected into the meat products. And don't get cooked out. Oh, they can't get cooked out? No, they don't, they're chemicals. They don't get cooked out. They stay in the, in the flesh, and they cause the same damage to us that they cause to the animals. But that chicken and that cow doesn't live but a couple of years, if that, sometimes a couple of months. And of course, they don't get a chance to experience and develop all of those health conditions that we see as a result of the consumption of them over and over and over again every day for years. Now when you're now when you're an athlete, as we mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. and you're in, and of course you're training, and you're at this full speed, they're telling us consume animal protein because it breaks down slower. It provides more energy, the protein, the, the complex carbohydrates, I believe. But they're not telling us not to consume animal protein because it's supposed to be good for the muscles and other aspects of our body. But that's what they're telling you. Gotcha. Yeah, but you, you get the argument many times people will come into my restaurant and they'll ask me the question, well, where do you get your protein from? And it'll be a family of people that look not healthy. I'll just leave it at that. Gotcha. They'll look not healthy and they're asking me, well, what, what are you doing to get your protein? And I, you know, of course, my immediate response, going back to our college, high school days, you know, we're quick to quit back at somebody, you know, but wait a minute, should you really be asking me what I'm doing wrong? Maybe you need to check yourself. But because I know how to, you know, be Finesse. diplomatic about it, you know, I say, well, you, you look at different animals in creation, and the, and the orangutan is one of the, the, the gorilla is one category where you're seeing that they eat nothing but fruits and vegetables. Right. And if they were in this room, all of us in this room would get our butts kicked because of the <laughs> amount of strength and capacity that they have. We, we just don't have it. And they're eating nothing but fruits and vegetables. You know, so we have to look at some of the science that we have adapted as a result of conditioning from television and radio and what's been given to us even in our schooling and realize that it's been motivated by the dairy and, and the meat industry. And we need to break that cycle because if we don't, we're going we're gonna to see ourselves continuing to suffer from the illnesses that we do and challenges that we do with regard to our performance, brother. I got you. Yep. Now, Kishana, when you work with some of your clients, depending upon how they perform, in their exercise and routine day to day, do you sometimes have to, or notice that, depending upon what time of day, or depending on what they ate that day, that it affects how well they work out, or how much endurance they have, or how strong they are during their workouts? Well, food definitely affects your overall performance, as he uh, mentioned earlier. Um, and just to piggyback on it, it, like I said, at the beginning, it's 70%. It's a huge portion of your overall, um, you know, lifestyle of fitness and healthy and and living a healthy lifestyle. So um, you can work out every day, all day, and not, you know, see the results you really want to see unless you are eating um, the proper meal portions, the sizes, and the, the healthy fruits and vegetables that you need to consume. Now, you and I had a conversation off the record a couple months ago, and uh, mm -hmm. the skin is the largest organ in the body. 
And that was something that I had essentially ignored for many years. And when we were conversating, you were telling me that it was important for us to pay attention to that part of us as well. What made you, what is it about that so important to you? Not just in the work that you do, but that made you even tell a guy like me, hey, look, you need to pay attention to your skin. Your skin. Well, so Fit, as um, you mentioned before, is a lifestyle. It's a, it's a company that promotes uh, living a fit and healthy lifestyle. And what that, what that is, is being fit, being knowledgeable about your health, but also incorporates the beauty, the part of it as well, which is your skin. And taking care of your skin is very, very important, um, as well as taking care of your, your body, what you eat, and your mind, body, and soul. Balance, per balance. So that's the whole, um, the whole so extra fit. That's what so extra fit is about. My body, my body, my body, and so, and, yes, and so. Now, the I noticed that when I eat certain things, certain things happen to my skin. I noticed that even more. Um, why is that? Well, because your skin is a not only is it absorption, because it will absorb when you put that lotion on it, whatever whatever perfume or you know cologne you put on, it absorbs that. But it also expels. It is an elimination organ. Right, correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you eliminate and absorb through the skin. So when the liver and the digestive organs are overtaxed, they begin to push those toxins out through your skin because they can't handle it. You take it in too much. So they got to figure out how to keep you alive, and that's what happens. So you see people who have challenges with their skin. Many times it's because they're consuming toxic food. That toxic food is an overload on the body. The body has to push it out somehow. So you should be very mindful about what you're eating. And when you see yourself getting sluggish after a meal, well, maybe that's not something you should eat. Or if you see that after eating a weekend worth of something that your skin is breaking out, well, the body's just indicating to you. It's just an indicator letting you know, don't do that anymore. Don't, don't go get some chemicals and spray it on your face and rub it in to try to get rid of it. Realize that your body's trying to send you a signal and listen to the signal. Respond. Do the right thing. Okay. Now, the... What I was told, Bill Cosby said it recently, and I've heard it from other people, garbage in, garbage out, you are what you eat. And I think he wrote a book that said, I am what I eat, now I'm scared. Uh, how is it, or why is it, that we have maintained this eating lifestyle that you are now talking about is bad for us? I, you know, I had grandparents that lived to like 197 years old, and they were eating shitlings and ham hocks and what changed? Well, what changed is what went into the food that we're consuming okay. today. So not only what went into the animal flesh or dead animal flesh that we're consuming, but even the vegetables, even the fruit. Things have changed. They're not the same. And that ties me into even uh, talking, listening to Brother Lennox earlier. That ties me into something that's going right, on even okay. on, the, on the continent of Africa. Monsanto is there now. and Kentucky Fried Chicken is being brought in by Bill Gates. And that's because there's, again, unfortunately, there's an agenda. And the agenda was to begin to control people's lives with food, back to the whole motivation behind me getting into this industry. But uh, going back to the, the, the deal in this is that we have to take charge and responsibility for what's going on inside of our body. Stop leaving it and, and depend upon somebody else who makes money off of keeping us sick and masking illnesses inside of us. And uh, I would say one of the biggest hurdles that we've got to overcome is we've got to feel better about ourselves. Because if you felt better about yourself, you would change the friends you hang out with, you would change the music you listen to, the TV shows you look at, and you would also change the food that you consume. And when you do that, you're going to get much better results. But, uh, and again, I remind you, what we're eating today, it might look like what Grandpa ate 50 years ago. But it's not. It's not the same. It's not the same. Food has been now used as one of the most effective weapons in our community. And it's a tough conversation because it's like, well, who's doing it then? Well, who, when, who's sanctioning it? Who's giving it the grade A approval if it's now a weapon being used? It's been a weapon. Well, political and corporate. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And we find ourselves now victims, but we think that there's no way somebody could offer us that which they say is food. There's no way they could offer us something that is unhealthy. Something that's going to destroy my health. Well, well, I know they're not feeding us something that's well, going to give me high well, blood pressure. The federal government is supposed to monitor and decide what the FDA approved and all that good stuff. Yeah. So the government is saying to me that it's cool. Well, the government is bought. Okay. okay. 
So government is bought. So when you find the bigger industries that are out there, like the pharmaceutical drug dealers, mm -hmm. you know, that are, are making a ton of money off of people being sick, Cute. and then they go and they send their lobbyists to Capitol Hill or wherever, and they tell people, look, this is what we need you to do. And by the way, there's a little something for you and the family. It's like, okay, well, let me do what you well, tell they, me to do. Because, you, like you know, nothing wrong with something for me and the family. Exactly. So we have to wake up and recognize that we have to take charge. You, you have the health challenges you have, not because of anybody else but you. You know, you have to take responsibility. And if you're going to overcome them, if you're going to get better, it's going to take you making those changes. Not somebody else. Stop relying on your government. Stop relying on, you know, the, your doctor. Hey, man, hold, hold on. Hey, I don't have health challenges other than I just like to eat. And I'm starting to eat. Don't be water. touching me. I mean, you, I mean, more an everlasting life. Uh, but no, in general, you're saying that we as a people, we as a nation, we as human beings. Absolutely. We have to take, look at the creatures in creation, which is the sickest. Human beings. human beings. Right. And we look now at the life expectancy. Ours is decreasing. As people of color, our, our life expectancy right. is decreasing. Right. And when do we finally say, hold on, wait a minute, enough is enough. Something's wrong. Something's grossly wrong. And what you eat not only affects your health, not only affects your academic performance, it affects your emotional, right. you know, balance. It affects your behavior. So all of these things are affected, and it's not by mistake. These yeah. things don't have to happen. Now, people that you work with have nine to five jobs. Yeah. They're on the fly. You know, many of them have nine to five jobs. They're on the fly, have to stop. I don't know if any of you have ever experienced this, but you have to pick the kids up, you have to do this, you have to go there, you know, and you have to eat on the fly. You eat in the car, you're on your way to the next thing, and then before you know it, the next thing comes up. And then somehow I have to make the time to come see you and <laughs> exercise. And exercise. Yeah. And be so extra fit. Right. How do I do that, Kishana. You prep your meals. Um, one of the things that I stress to my clients is prepare yourself for whatever it is you want to achieve. You want to prepare for success. So if you want to lose weight, if you want to tone, if you want to be in a bikini uh, competition, Right, that's next, next year, I'm going to my Yeah, I know. <laughs> you have to prepare yourself, and how you do that is plan. Make a plan. Um, I take myself for an instance. I am preparing for my uh, up-and-coming bikini competition. So I prepare four meals, six days a week, in containers, portion it out, and I have it set, ready to go, and my day is, I don't even have to think of what I'm eating. Okay. So if you prepare for success, you will succeed. Okay. All right. So before we go into a and a section of this, and I'm sure you all have some dynamic questions um, to ask, and if you don't, then, um, <laughs> then I'm going to have a conversation with you folks because these two are lighting it up to say the least. Here, we're here at our Everlasting Life Restaurant on Central Avenue, 9185 Central Avenue in uh, Capitol Heights, Maryland. So my good friend Sam in Saudi Arabia and some of you other folks all over the world, you want to go online and look at Everlasting Life Restaurant and chime in on what my good friend here is doing and also Kishana from uh, So Extra Fit. Before I leave the stage, let's go into this part a little differently. Are you telling me that I don't need or I shouldn't use my skincare products. Are you telling me that <clears throat> I think we're doing a, a pain, um, I want to say uh, there's a, a pain ointment out there, so to sure. speak, that helps to alleviate some of the aches and pains. Now these are businesses, but they're also, I know I've been using a product that was introduced to me by a good friend, uh, Secret from the Dead Sea, salt minerals and and it has helped to get rid of some discoloration. I used to be butt ugly back in the day, now I'm gorgeous. <laughs> and before I started using this product, I wasn't quite that guy. But now I'm becoming that guy that he's talking about a little bit earlier. So and I just plan on getting even more prettier as I go, Kishana. But I'm using that and I know that I had this pain in my neck. And no, it wasn't my dad, but I had another pain in my neck. And in order for, to help me get rid of that pain, I came to you to talk about it, and you hit me with the one and then, and the pain was gone in 15 minutes. Right. So as I eat and I get a little healthier, do I then need to go and throw out all of my 
skin moisturizers and do I need to throw all of my pain remedies? Talk to me. Well, I would say this, that when you understand that through the skin you consume, look at the label of what it is that you're putting on your skin. Would you put it in your mouth? Mm. Would you eat it? And you have to ask yourself that question. So if your underarm deodorant is not edible, then why are you eating it? If your lotion is not edible, then why are you eating it? It's not why are you using it, why are you eating it? If what you're spraying on to smell good is not edible, then why are you using it? Because all you're doing is damaging the integrity of the functionality of the body. It cannot function with those toxins, except it sees them and it tries to address them as an enemy. So now it's a Well, then we talk, we had a conversation about preservatives because in order for something to have a shelf life, you have to put something in it that allows it to exist longer than a day. In the modern world we live in, yeah. But there was a time when we didn't. We, so, didn't, we didn't have to have that shelf life. There weren't mass production of stuff in other countries that were shipped over here six months later and then put on shelves and could last another three, four, five years. It wasn't that way. That's where we are now. But you're seeing as we're moving forward in, towards that um, uh, damage. And by the, the way, body. brother, I'm not going to eat my lotion. I don't care what it is. Yeah, you eat it. You I'm eat it. Saying. If you put it on your skin, you eat it. Gotcha. Yeah, so okay. that happens. Now, <laughs> with regard to this, this so-called progress, so we're making all this progress with all these motion, lotions and potions and skin creams and so on that's supposed to fix everything on our body. And now you see there's a whole group of people that are saying, no, we're going back to green. We're going back to nature. And they're doing things naturally. So they're not using the products with all the chemicals in it. And they're getting great results. Right, and, this is, and this is what I'm finding out with the stuff that I'm doing. You know, being from the Dead Sea, you know, it's, it probably is licks with more good stuff from the ground than anything else I've done sure. before. Sure. Um, and, I chose, and I chose it for that reason. Now, on my pain part, are you at liberty to talk about some of what we're doing to... Absolutely. Body? Absolutely. I think pain has become like one of the second or third most... Uh, financially beneficial yeah. categories of products being sold in the world. And one of the reasons why is because so much of what we eat causes inflammation. So it's a dual uh, action that we're taking here. You're, you're reducing the amount of toxic, acidic food that's going to cause you to become inflamed. And inflammation is natural because the body's just trying to protect itself protect from the acid right. that you're taking in or from this toxic. It's got to protect these vital organs here. So it does that to protect you from that. And, and your response is, when you find yourself with the pain in your neck or your arms or your back or wrists or wherever, you're putting on these products that are now going to help reduce the inflammation and, uh, and help bring the body back into proper balance. And, and the product that we're talking about is real-time pain relief. That Real-time pain relief will give you the wherewithal to bring the body back into balance, not only giving you the menthol that is going to, you know, of course, mask the pain, but also help reduce the inflammation, which is the cause of the pain. Now, as a former football player, I have pain 24 hours, seven days a week. Sure. I was a running back, as you know. Yeah. And uh, that meant, Keyshawn, that a whole bunch of people my size jumped on me for no damn reason at all. <laughs> uh, just because I held the ball. So every once in a while, I gave it to a guy like him and said, jump on him. And then it just didn't yeah, get to basketball. It just didn't get any better. <laughs> so in terms of my fitness as well, to help manage pain, what kinds of things are you doing in your world to help folks who are in chronic pain? I um, suggest stretching a lot. It's, you'd be amazed how many people really don't even take the time out to stretch their muscles and to, um, you know, lengthen the muscle because so much of your everyday exercises you know, walking and lifting heavy. It's contract. Yeah, it, it is. And you need to really make sure that you are stretching out the muscle. In addition to that, um, taking the time out to do fun activities that um, that motivate you or um, enriches the, it likes you. And, you know, so does, so does it all have to be hardcore it does, training? It, it can be fun stuff like... It can be fun stuff like going out and going to movies or um, going just to... Just being active. Yeah, being active. Or also going and taking a med meditation um, cat class or something like mm -hmm. that just to center the mind and the body and the soul together. Okay. Balance, per balance. Now, in terms of, uh, you're a very fashionable human being. I don't know if I ever told you Oh, I think, that. oh, really? Yes, you're very yes. fashionable. Thank you. And, uh, <laughs> and, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, 
It's, it's, I know uh, that she gets all the pretty stuff. You know? <laughs> I don't get nothing. It goes from her to you. You know, you you are gorgeous, and I, I, yeah, I, I, I am my father's child. <laughs> so the the wardrobe, the skin, the nutrition, the fitness sounds expensive for me to get to or anyone to get to their optimum preservation of their sexiness and appeal. Now, because I'm in front of this camera, I've become very, very self-conscious about this over the last couple of years. But for the most part, um, I notice but I, I notice people for how they look first. And then after that, we might have a conversation. And I, I mean, all people, you know, so sometimes when I walk in a place and I'm the, you know, the broadest brother in the joint, some people will either talk to me or they'll walk away from me because they're scared of how I look at that time. So they either have to put on a shirt and tie or take it off depending on what effect I'm trying to get. Now, you in your many lives, you have to look at every aspect of your appearance and every aspect of your persona. How much work does it require for us to look our absolute best? Well, you have to define what your best is. Okay. Once you do that, um, you have to either make sure that you stay up to whatever your best is. So if your best, like you said, like you said, um, it's 310. Hey, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, whatever your best is, work towards that. So say for instance, for myself, um, my best to me is making sure that I'm toned and my skin is cleared and uh, a lot of, and that I'm have enough energy. Well, where do you get that? You get that with the food that you eat and also working out and exercising. And once you do that, combining that, then you start to see changes in your energy and the way you look and even the way that you feel and that's the whole overall preserving your sexy is i said before that's to preserve your sexy guys <laughs> and uh, uh ladies out there that's that's the whole uh combination of the selection fit lifestyle so when you look good you feel good and vice versa so look good feel good play good, play good. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm